This session will show the basic Ruby workflow, from the definition of the reservoir geometry and properties, the well properties and controls, to the generation of the grid and the simulation. A new document is created by clicking on the blank icon. As a first step, the reference time and time zone can be set. Document units, which are by default oil field, can be defined here. The last tab provides a space for free text to allow for any user comments. In the following step, the PBT parameters of the first run must be defined. The PBT bottle opens the PBT settings. In this case, the fluid types are defined as saturated oil and water. The other PBT parameters are kept as default. The name of the run can be set at this stage or modified later. A new Ruby document is created by landing on the Map tab, where the reservoir and the well geometry and properties are defined. In the Map view, an image can be loaded to create the map. First, the 00, zero reference point is redefined using the local XY option. The selection of the reference point on the image will update the X and Y values. Next step is to set the field scale. This can be set in the same option window. The radial button scale field is activated. The scale is defined by drawing the corresponding line and entering its length value. Once done, the contour can be drawn. It can start anywhere and proceed around the reservoir by clicking until the polygon of the overlay trace is complete. The fault option allows the user to draw inner ceiling faults represented by the thick black lines on the reservoir map. Once the various elements of the map have been drawn, the displayed image can be hidden by unchecking the image option in the display settings. To complete the definition of the reservoir geometry, the number of layers, their names as well as the individual layer horizons and thicknesses need to be defined. Under the Geometry option, the number of layers is set to 3. By double-clicking on the header, the top layer is renamed to Sand, the middle layer to Shell, and the bottom layer to Bottom. The top horizon type is changed from Constant to Dataset. A new dataset is added in the Spatial Data dialog box and the top horizon ASCII file is loaded. A preview of the file allows the user to define the column format correctly. Once done, the data are shown on the map. The sand layer thicknesses are also defined by a dataset, but this time the data are directly picked on the map. The thicknesses vary from 50 feet in the southwest, 40 feet in the northeast, with a maximum thickness of 70 feet in the center as shown. Finally, the shell layer thickness is changed to 1 feet. Under the Reservoir Properties option, the reservoir topology is defined as layered and show the previously defined three layers. Each layer may be defined by its own property set. The property set of the shell layer is renamed as Shell Rock. For the bottom layer, the property set is named Sand Rock. Now, each property set is defined. For the default set of the sand layer, the permeability is changed from constant to dataset. The dataset values are loaded from an ASCII file, and the data are shown on the map. The sand porosity values are also loaded from a dataset. The shell rock properties are set with a permeability to 0.001 millidarcies, porosity to 0.05, and the lower leakage factor to 0.01. Default values are kept for the sand rock property set for the bottom layer. The initial state of the default property set is accessed as shown. The fluid distribution is defined by a gas oil contact at 5,500 feet and the water oil contact at 6,080 feet. 
The resulting pressure profile and fluid distribution can be previewed on the right. Finally, under the relative permeability option, the no extrapolation box is checked. The reservoir properties description is complete once the setup is validated. The next step is to define the wells. The reservoir image is once again displayed for this purpose. The well icon is used to create a vertical production well as indicated on the map. The well name is changed to P01. The perforation editing mode is enabled and the nodes can be dragged to adjust the perforation length to the top layer only. The perforation interval is snapped to the limits of the layer by right clicking on the perforation. The define intake option is checked and all the default values retained. The well intake can be applied to the entire well trajectory or only the part above the reservoir. The latter option is selected in this example. The final stage is to define the production schedule for the well under the Schedule tab. The Edit button provides access to the Schedule Editing dialog. The production target of a surface pressure of 200 PSIA is set with the constraint of 10,000 barrels per day on the total bottom hole rate. The well icon is selected again to create the injection well I02 at the location displayed on the image. The perforation length is set to the entire lower zone. In the schedule editing dialog, the flow regime type is set to injection. The target is defined by a bottom hole water rate of minus 8,000 barrels per day and the maximum bottom hole pressure constraint is set to 10,000 PSIA. Once other reservoir and well definitions are complete, the grid icon shows a preview of the 3D grid of the reservoir and its properties. Under the Reference Logs tab, the Completion option opens the Well Schematic dialog for the production well. The well sketch can be built from the components in the library or may be loaded from a specific file as shown. Under the Run tab, the next main stages are the initialization of the simulation model followed by the simulation. In the Initialization dialog, the production logs for well P01 well results and global results are selected as simulation outputs. The default numerical settings are retained. A 25-year simulation is chosen. The initialization option generates the Voronoi grid from the previous map elements and initializes the model at the initial state previously defined. Once done, the 3D map and the production log plots with the well completion are displayed. The progression of the selected outputs such as pressure and rates per well are displayed on the well results plot as the simulation proceeds. Once the simulation is complete, the global results plot is also displayed. On the well results plot, the simulated rates and pressure channels for each well can be shown. The display results can be changed by choosing the required gauge results from the show list. In this case, the GOR and water cut are selected and plotted. The production logs plot shows the inflow along the wellbore. The full log along the perforated section is displayed. Using the navigation panel, the results at different time steps are highlighted. The global results plot can show results for the whole field or on a layer, region or property set level. In this example, remaining oil volumes for each layer are selected for display.
By double-clicking on the Run Status window, a run summary with some primary results can be seen. In the 3D plot, the reservoir pressure is displayed by default at the end of the simulation. This can be changed to any other static or dynamic grid parameter. For example, water saturation is shown. Displayed cells can also be filtered based with their value. In this example, only cells with the water saturation above 0.25 are shown. The evolution of these cells during the simulation can then be played back. This concludes the Ruby main workflow session. To learn more about this or any other Kappa modules, browse the website for literature, more videos, and example data or contact support at kappaeng.com or your local Kappa office.